I just find that I have always wanted to contribute my time to something greater and bigger that is also very local and can have an impact on both plants, animals, and people. And I feel like my role at the museum and in my volunteer work at the Botanical Garden and also my involvement here at Sisterhood has really captured that. That was Tim Wong, another volunteer at Sisterhood Gardens. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. In this podcast, we get to know Tim. Born and raised on the peninsula, Tim would visit the city a lot as a kid to see his grandparents. After college in San Diego, he volunteered at the California Academy of Sciences, where he works today. Tim talks about the OMI community that he lives in, just up the block from Sisterhood. He values community and weaves that together with his love of plants and animals. Here's Tim. Uh, my name's Tim Wong, and uh, I'm a biologist at a science museum, and I take care of a tropical plant collection in a four-story rainforest, in addition to taking care of a variety of different animals, including fish, penguins, and butterflies. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's here, all. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a lot. Um, but, uh, we'll I, dig into that later. Yeah, but sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, here at Sisterhood Gardens, uh, I've been part of Sisterhood since uh, 2016 when I moved to San Francisco County. Mm-hmm. And I've been a volunteer and steering committee, uh, steering committee member here at the garden, really helping uh, the garden with uh, managing the plant collection, helping them shape up the garden plan, and helping to decide like what things we should try out that are good for pollinators, but also plants that people use here at the garden. Mm-hmm. How did you find out about Sisterhood? Uh, I actually found out about Sisterhood from Jamie. Uh, okay. Jamie was a friend that I met and uh, made through Instagram with uh, a bunch of other uh, plant enthusiasts and professionals. And she got me um, interested in Sisterhood a long time ago before I even lived in the county. And so when I moved here, and in particular moved to the same block as our community garden, I wanted to be involved. Yeah. That'll so so you you didn't necessarily move here for the garden. Not really, um, but as you know, in SF, you know, uh, land comes at a premium, and yep. access to outdoor space is uh, so um, so valuable. And yep. so naturally, moving to this part of the city and to the same block as the community garden, uh, I wanted to get involved as soon as I I moved here, and, and I definitely did. And I've been only becoming more involved um, ever since I've been living here. Got it. Okay, now I, um, if, if you um, are willing, I would love to go back into your story, um, your sure. life, yeah. where you're from, who are your parents, who are your ancestors, yeah. like any, anything that you can yeah. dig up for us. Um, I'm a California native. I grew up in the Bay Area in San Mateo County, okay. and uh, I first really got connected to plants because I was fortunate to grow up in a place that had a lot of native butterflies hmm. um, that would visit different kinds of native plants that were growing in our backyard and around our neighborhood. Um, Can and I being, ask where in San Mateo County? Uh, Hillsboro. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, right by the Flintstone House, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good Which landmark. is still there, thank God. Yeah. And so, you know, watching that um, relationship between butterflies and plants really got me more interested in knowing, uh, wanting to know more about, like, well, what is that plant they're visiting? Or what plant do they need to complete their life cycle? Was that you happening know? at a young age for you? or? Yeah, it started probably in elementary school that oh, I wow. was fascinated about that relationship and okay um it really just snowballed into wanting to know more about different kinds of plants different families of plants plants that are great cut flowers uh tropical plants and so i've been very fortunate to kind of dabble into different groups of plants um with different purposes uh in different parts of my volunteer and also professional life growing up not far from san francisco because this is a show about san francisco um what are some of your earliest memories of the city? Like when, you know, coming here, what were you doing? Yeah. What, what was it like? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, my grandparents uh, live in the sunset. And uh, so we were here in the city all the time visiting them. Uh, in addition to that, um, our elementary school would take us to the California Academy of Sciences at oh. the original building for field, field trips, trips all the time. So my What's memories up? of San Francisco were often either visiting my grandparents or actually going to Golden Gate Park to visit the museum. Not a um, bad way to grow up. I yeah, exactly. So it's 
really fun to still be working at um, an institution that inspired me when I was younger. Yeah. Was it a big deal to come up here or from where you lived when you were a kid? Um, not so much. I mean, we were, we were pretty much in the city almost every weekend. Oh, uh, because so. of your grandparents, yeah, mostly. Yeah. Um, what other kinds of things would you do when you came here? Like, did you go to <laughs> oh, Fisherman's gosh. Wharf? Did you go to Chinatown? Uh, you know, uh, candlestick. Like, what, what what kind of things were you doing? Oh, we did a couple different things. We definitely go out to eat a lot. Um, you want to name drop some restaurants? Uh, oh, man, I love that there stuff. Are, you know, there is a lot of restaurants I can't quite remember the names of, but they're really good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, and also and, you can't tell everyone about them. Yeah. If, they're, if they're still around, we can't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we definitely spent a lot of time around Golden Gate Park. Yeah, more yeah. so more in the yeah. west on the west side of the city. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, how old are you? When did you, when did you grow up? Oh yeah, um, I'm 33. Okay, so you grew <laughs> up in the 90s, 2000s, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever, like, as a as a young person, did you ever envision yourself living here? You know, I wasn't really sure. Yeah. I uh, I actually went to college in San Diego, um, at UC San Diego, where mm-hmm. I studied environmental systems, ecology, behavior, and evolution. And I also was that one major? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, okay. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I thought there was like uh, three, three different majors. And then I also did a minor in marine science, and I was really kind of aiming more to be a marine biologist, which okay. you know that could take you anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, I was just in Maui and in February, and the whales were incredible. Oh, nice. I've never seen so many whales in wow. my life. It was amazing. Yeah. So I found myself actually also inspired a lot by the ocean and our. Our college um, had an associated aquarium called the Birch Aquarium, and I put in a lot of time during my undergrad years actually volunteering for them in their animal care program, and so got a lot of hands-on experience taking care of aquariums and working with fish, and that really led me to my opportunity to volunteer at the California Academy of Sciences before I started working there. Okay. So were you still in college when you did the volunteer work, or...? Was I was still in college when I volunteered at the Birch Aquarium in San Diego, yeah. uh, but once I graduated, I moved back to the Bay Area in yeah. San Mateo County and uh, got involved with volunteering for the California Academy of Sciences. Yeah. Okay. Were you like my dreams are kind of coming together? Was it? How, how was that for you? I, I guess, was this after, yeah. they, after they reopened? or Yes, after okay. they reopened the new okay. building. Yeah, you know, in some way, yes. I, I'm very motivated and driven by volunteer work and and just doing things that um, I enjoy but also I feel like contribute a lot and so naturally I'm not surprised that something that I pursued as a volunteer role became something that grew into a profession yeah a career a career yeah safe to say yeah I think a lot of I think anyone who's been to the Cal Academy of Sciences since they reopened especially knows about the rainforest exhibit it's yeah kind of a big deal it's really stunning it's a it's a really amazing place to start my day um i take care of all the tropical plants in the rainforest currently with uh, a team of people including um, some of the butterflies and the birds in there and really just a magical place to start your morning in the middle of san francisco in a rainforest um, in our canopy really uh, so I'm very thankful for that, uh, and I've been doing that for a number of years. Yeah. Um, in addition to taking care of some fish in our aquarium, so I mm-hmm. get an opportunity to dive in our coral reef exhibit and mm-hmm. some of our other large aquariums. Awesome. Uh, and then sometimes I finish my day um, helping to take care of our penguins and feeding our, yes. and caring for our African penguin colony. Yes. Do you do diving out in the ocean here? Or? Once in a while, it's pretty cold out here, yes. and I've been pretty spoiled to to spend a lot of my diving um, in a public aquarium. <laughs> Uh, where the conditions are pretty stable and predictable and <laughs> right. the water is really clear. Yeah. So I'm very thankful for that. But I do also like diving out in the field and in the ocean. What kind of things have you seen out there? We um, were just talking yesterday. I don't dive, but some friends of mine do. And they were, we, um, they haven't seen sharks, but there was some talk about sharks. Yeah, you know, some of my favorite diving has, has actually been in different tropical regions around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've really enjoyed places like Curacao mm-hmm. uh, and the Caribbean, Cozumel. Uh, mm-hmm. I also really enjoyed diving. Cenotes and all that. Uh, all that I've right. done that before, too, yeah. in Mexico. Um, I also really loved Palau, um, mm-hmm. kind of in the um, Western Pacific. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a really amazing respect for the ocean and still have a lot of bigger fish and bigger megafauna, like manta rays and sharks uh, because of their mindfulness Mm -hmm. and uh, it's truly spectacular to see the reefs and giant clams and all kinds of things that Mm -hmm. um, I had wanted to see in person after working at an aquarium yeah how does all that stuff like like what do you see when you dive here Oh, when you, you know, here it is like 
great kelp forest. Um, yeah. You could run into seals, sea lions, sea otters, a lot of amazing invertebrates, uh, giant sea anemones, sea yes. stars of all kinds. So rockfish, uh, a lot of really amazing things out here. And I should probably dive um, here in California more often. Mm. I just realized as I was ta asking that question, I'm like, we've been doing this podcast for almost five years and we haven't talked with anyone about diving here oh like yeah. we, we haven't gone underwater yeah <laughs> so yeah. thank you for thank you for sharing no that. worries yeah that's cool do you can you speak to both with your work um at the museum and here the sense of community the sense of education um because obviously I, I, I definitely that's what the museum yeah, yeah. Ser serves that purpose but then it's also a community and this is a community and it's all around the natural world it's you know that's, yeah. the, that's the topic right is the natural world so can you speak to any of that and 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 i guess your attraction to that kind of work yeah it's definitely been somewhere i've been attracted to pretty much in every opportunity i've sought out either for work or for just how i spend my free time has been focused on that um I also had a number of years I volunteered for the San Francisco Botanical Garden in their California Native Plant Collection. Awesome. And I just find that I have always wanted to contribute my time to something greater and bigger that is also very local mm -hmm. and can have an impact on both plants, animals, and people. And I feel like my role at the museum and in my volunteer work at the Botanical Garden and also my involvement here at Sisterhood has really captured that. Let's talk a little bit more about you know, growing up in, is it fair to say, like, suburbs? And yeah, then, and then yeah. moving to the city. What was that yeah. like for you? Was it... I always wanted to live in the city, I think, especially after college when I moved back to the Bay Area and I was still living in the suburbs. And, uh, you know, since I worked in the city and had a lot of friends that lived here, it was an experience I was looking forward to. And, and uh, I've really found that no matter where you live in the city, your experience is really shaped by how much you put into your community, where you live, um, how you treat your neighbors, and how you contribute to your immediate surroundings and the people that live there. So for me, it, I've been so fortunate to live right on the same block as Sisterhood, being able to you know, meet my neighbors and really feel like I'm contributing on a very local level. And I think that I would love to encourage more people to also do that. Absolutely, well said. Um, the thing I'd love to end on, um, our theme this season uh, is we're still here. We started this season in the pandemic, so it's like, you know, and even going back before that, a lot of displacement historically, yeah. um, including the founding of the city from, and, you know, taking it from the, the native people who lived here. Um, but anyway, more recently with, especially with the pandemic and the people who chose to leave, the people who were forced to leave, mm -hmm. um, and a sentiment that I think is pretty widely shared that like, you know, what is happening to San Francisco? Right. Um, I think despite a lot of those things, there's the, there's that's like, no, there's still a lot of us here who care about it and who want to contribute to it. So what does it mean to you? We're oh yeah. Here. I think incredibly so, you know, um, when the pandemic first started, um, for us here at Sisterhood, um, we weren't really sure like what was going to happen. And, you know, we really relied a lot on volunteers to help us out with different garden projects. And were you, you know, able to still come here during the beginning? Yeah. Okay, you okay. know, um, what's so nice about being part of Sisterhood is we're an outdoor public garden space. And so it was actually one of the few places that people felt comfortable, you know, still interacting with their neighbors or friends, um, in a safe outdoor setting. And, actually surprisingly the pandemic really um you know spurred a lot of our projects and a lot of our improvements and the garden actually became more alive uh i think during this time as people really sought out spending time outside and wanting to learn about gardening and so um, nature is one of the winners of the pandemic i think I so may. you're yeah. totally right I, yeah. and so in some ways i think we've really thrived and have grown the most during the past um couple years what, it, what does it mean to you, though, to still be here? Like, in not only the garden, but you and the city and how everything fits together and what kind of city, you know, we can be. Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, as someone that grew up in the Bay Area and works in the city and contributes to something like Sisterhood, this is really home. And this is where I feel like I belong and want others to feel like they're welcomed here and um, not be afraid to contribute and get to know your neighbors and 
continue building that sense of community on in whatever way, shape, or form people have the ability to do. So I think very much that um, the garden is such a big part of that. That was Tim Wong. On the next episode of Story San Francisco, we'll take a break from the City Garden series as we revisit with Mason J. Mason was on the podcast back in season one as part of our first Reimagine event. Episode 43 with Mason drops next Tuesday wherever you listen to podcasts. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 180 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review the show so we can reach even more folks. We love email, and we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Story San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.